Hey guys, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to be filming the second half of my February wrap-up. I only read a couple more things in the month of February, but one of them was a buddy read, one was a reread, and then I read two other things as well throughout the month. So the first thing I finished after TBR Takedown was We Should Hang Out Sometime by Josh Sunquist. I knew that Josh Sunquist was a YouTuber. I had never seen his videos. I had no idea really who he was. And I just thought the premise of this book was funny. He basically comes to a realization that he has never had an actual girlfriend. So he goes back and meets with girls that he almost dated and asks them why they didn't end up dating, essentially. And with the added handicap of Josh having only one leg, he thinks that that might have a lot to do with why he's had issues with dating. And his voice was just very entertaining throughout this. And it set up sort of like a scientific experiment. Like he would have a hypothesis and then the conclusion of each interaction with each girl. I just thought it was very entertaining and I have since subscribed to Josh's YouTube channel and I would highly recommend doing that. The next book that I finished was my buddy read of Red Rising with Tina from The Never Ending Bookshelf. And as you can see, I tabbed this one up quite a lot because I really did like a lot of the quotes or like certain moments in the book. This book was really hard for me to rate because I liked that it was so fast paced, but I also didn't like it sometimes because I felt like I missed a lot of things that were happening because things happened so fast. Even though we were reading it kind of slow since it was a buddy read. I think I might have even put a 3.75 on Goodreads, but I think I'm going to drop that to like a 3.25, 3.5, somewhere in there. Because while I did enjoy the writing, I do really enjoy the world that Pierce Brown has created in this series. The like school setting that a lot of this is set in and why it's compared to the Hunger Games or like other dystopians was really like just kind of super brutal and they're like kids thrown into this essentially an arena like the Hunger Games and they have to work together within their houses in some sort of fake war situation and it's supposed that's what their schooling is like it teaches them I guess how to live in the society I don't know it was really weird and I did like the writing, but it was really hard for me to write. I think Tina kind of had the same sort of issues with it. Like, we were just like... The setting is just so weird for the story, and it does set up the series really well, so I do understand why it was like that, but... There are characters in here that I really do like. I like Darrow, even though he is kind of very wishy-washy, as <laughs> Tina pointed out in her video as well. He changes his mind more often than not and it's really frustrating because we're like reading from his perspective and are kind of in his head. So seeing him change his mind so much, I'm like, oh, just make up your mind. Like, what do you want? And there is something in me, I don't know what it is, and this is still true while we're buddy reading the second book right now. I don't trust the female protagonist whatsoever like just something in me doesn't trust her and I'm not sure what it is but we'll see if that instinct has anything any sort of substance as the series goes on I am really enjoying the series I will say that it's just this first book was really hard to it wasn't hard to get into Ugh, I don't even know how to explain it <laughs> like it's easy to get caught up in the story but with this one especially if I put it down I would like almost be like oh I don't know if I want to pick that up because it requires so much brain power for me to keep up with it but overall I am enjoying the series <laughs> and then I had a moment of realization while I was reading this and my next book that both of the books I was reading had red and rising in the title <laughs> Because the next book that I finished was Red Moon Rising. A 24-7 prayer is awakening a generation. And this is about the 24-7 prayer movement that was started over in the UK. I just think it's an incredible read for any Christian. Because it really gives testimonial like accounts of the power of prayer and what it can do. And how once a movement like this takes off nothing can stop it like it's it has some of the most incredible testimonies in here it has some 
amazing statistics. It has a bunch of... It shows how this movement moved around literally the entire world in a very short space of time. And I don't even know how else to describe it other than it's literally what it sounds like, a 24-7 prayer movement, where there would be prayer rooms that were created that each person would fill a time slot during the 24 hours so that somebody would pr be praying at all times in that prayer room. And like the idea caught on to a ton of other churches and it just turned into something way bigger than they ever thought it was going to be. So I would highly recommend this. I gave this five out of five stars. Probably one of my favorite Christian books I've read. And then the last book that I finished in the month of February <laughs> was my reread of City of Ashes for the Mortal Instruments Cassandra Clare read-along thing that's happening. I know that Ashley from A Dash of Ash and Katie from Kate's Book Date are two of the people that are helping with this, and I think there's going to be a live show sometime this month, possibly soon, I don't remember. But <laughs> I did like this one more than the first one. I think I gave it like a 3.5 stars. The angst in this one after the big reveal at the end of City of Bones, if you've read the series, you know what it is. The angst in this one is really painful. And there's also a relationship in this one that I hate. Like, I hate those two characters together romantically in any way. And it bothers me so much. Ah, I don't know. It just gets under my skin. I don't know if I just don't like the trope or whatever. This one is more interesting than the first one, I will give it that, but it's still not at all my favorite in the series. But City of Glass actually, from what I remember, was one of my favorites from the series, so we'll see if that remains true. I am enjoying this reread because there's a lot of things that I forgot, considering I read them. I read all six books in the span of a month, like two years ago when I first read them, and I just like blew through them just to get them out of the way, essentially. <laughs> So I am enjoying rereading this and being reminded of what exactly happened to get them to the main points in the series. So yeah, those are the other four books that I finished in the month of February. Thank you all for watching and I will see all of you guys next time.